Okay, hello guys, welcome back to Chris Flies Paints. Chris here, of course, and today we are back in uh, DCS 2.5 in the Mirage 2000C for Mission 5 of the Baltic Dragon campaign. So, let's jump in and get going. As you can see, it's pretty dark right now, so we're going to hit left, alt, and L to pull up the flashlight, get the battery on. We're going to contact ground crew and get ground power on. And then we can just pop all of these guys up and be flooded with glorious light. So, rudely interrupted there. Let's uh, switch the radios on and this will start with a little audio cutscene which happens. And in the meantime, I'm just going to work my way around the cockpit and get everything ready for starting our engine. So that can go on and... Uh, why can't I see the other one? Am I losing my mind? I'm losing my mind. There we go. Okay, so let's just walk our way around and get started here. So. Okay. Green radio, Okay, green channel 2, there is green channel 2. Let's get the radar set up how we like it. There we go. Let's get that back and cut. And I think we're looking pretty grand. Let's get the parking brake on and then we're going to go uh, boop, 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 boop. And boop. We're going to wait for that to hit 10% and we're going to nudge the throttle forwards. Consider that nudge. And I think we are looking pretty grand. Uh, let's get the canopy closed, actually, just stop all of this noise. It's also probably a bit cold outside, I imagine. Let's get that locked. And looking pretty good. I'm going to turn on some of the lights in the cockpit now. So turn that one down, we're going to turn that one down, we're going to turn that one down, and we're going to turn that one down. That one's going to go back up. I missed there. And I'm going to turn my, uh, well, I'll keep my little hand torch on for the time being. So we are looking about good there. So let's get that done, that done, and that done. And I think that is us looking pretty great. Let's get our countermeasures on up there. That's probably quite important. Let's also get our IFF set up. That's also probably quite important. So two, five, five, four. And I'm going to turn that fully on. We're going to go one, two, three. Turn that off, and uh, that should be it. As you'll notice, I did put 424X into the Takan. That is intentional. I know that is the Takan for Katezi, which is our divert landing rather than our actual landing. But there's a good reason for that, and that will become apparent further on in the episode. So from that, everything's looking pretty grand. Radar is warming up. Everything is basically pretty good, ready to go, I think, and good. Let's call a uh, flight lead here and confirm we are ready to taxi. Ready taxi. Let's pop our handbrake off. Let's turn our nasal steering on. And let's turn our little hand torch off. Okay, that is our taxi clearance. So we are gonna get rolling. Oh, I'm sorry, ground power chappy. I don't do it every time, but I do do it fairly regularly. Uh, some ground power off. off ground power. Copy. I mean, he's still talking to me, so it can't be that bothered. Right. Hey, what are you doing? I've just turned off the ground power. Well, it's too late now. It's done. Let's get rolling. So I'm super happy to be back playing some more DCS. I'm going to get some more regular hours in now. We're finally moved to Wales and settled, which is great news. Um, if any of you guys know, if any of you guys are British military aviation enthusiasts, 
you probably know by now, but North Wales is a pretty great place to see planes. Um, popped outside the house a couple of days ago, saw a load of hawks dogfighting literally over the house. So that was pretty incredible. We've had a couple of hawks go past at low level. We've had a couple of F-15s go past at low level. And we've had a couple of GR4 tornadoes go past at low level, all of which is extremely exciting. They go past the house within probably less than a mile, I'd say, and probably below 300 foot. So it's pretty incredible. You tend to kind of, you don't see the first one because it's so low and fast, but you tend to see the wingman. So pretty exciting, pretty great place to live, pretty great place to live, even if it wasn't for all the low flying planes. But yeah, so that's all all going pretty great. Other thing I wanted to talk about today actually is I, uh, I'm looking for someone to fly with occasionally as a wingman in DCS. Um, basically uh, I'm going to run out of single player missions fairly soon. I'd love to do some more kind of close flying combat that kind of thing. So if you're interested just leave a comment down below and let me know we can arrange some sort of multiplayer fight and see how it goes. Don't worry if you're not too experienced, I'm not that experienced either, and I can help you out if you need any help. But, yeah, just give me a shout down below and we can see what happens. Um, right. So, I'm just going to get, I'm going to set my autopilot to uh, 3000. Uh, probably want to stop about there. And I'm going to switch... Uh, Radar into on and let's turn park and brake back off. And what we are going to do is uh, lock flight lead as soon as we get up into the air. Come on, mate. We, did I turn park and brake? I didn't turn park and brake off. There we go. Uh, we're going to lock flight lead as soon as we get up into the air and just make sure we don't hit him. He has a slightly erratic flight path I find in this mission, so you have to be a little bit wary of him just to make sure you don't fly into the back of him and die. So there we go, we are lined up, let's push the throttle forwards. Okay, nose while steering can go off. Uh, we're going to rotate at about 160, uh, we are a little bit heavy today. Come on. Uh, I'm not sure what that noise was, but I'm going to pretend it was nothing too bad. So let's uh, reduce the throttle back and let's very quickly see if we can lock up flight lead here. If I can find flight lead. Flight lead. Hello? There he is. Let's get him uh, locked. And there we go. So as you can see, he's not flying particularly fast and that is why we have him locked. He's 2.6 nautical miles away, so doing absolutely fine. I think we're looking pretty grand across the board. Let's just uh, lock on our autopilot. And I'm just going to pop outside the plane and just see, make sure we didn't lose anything massively vital. I mean, we're looking pretty great. Maybe in a wee tail strike. So, uh, check our stores. One mag. Yeah, so two magics, two 530s. Yeah, we're looking pretty grand. I think we're absolutely fine. Um, it's just a bit scary when you hear a loud bang on takeoff. All right, let's turn our autopilot off and just get on this dude's tail. Okay, that was exciting there, but we kept him in front of us. So 
It's always a little bit fun flying at night. But as the mission goes, it does brighten up. So if you do have a major issue of watching a dark YouTube video, which I'm sure some of you do, uh, don't worry, it gets a lot brighter. And it's actually really nice flying at dawn anyway. You get a lot of nice colours and the contrails look very nice. Or chemtrails if you're a conspiracy mad nut. I'll just speed up a little bit more. He's kind of getting away. Not that I would call 1.3 nautical miles getting away, but. Okay, let's just reduce our speed a little bit here. I don't want to get too close to the back of him. Okay, so there's a nice little bit of colour to this story. So, yeah, if you didn't, uh, if I didn't mention already, we're doing air-to-air -air training today. So we're going up against a couple of remotely piloted F-4 drones, um, which I'm pretty sure don't exist in real life, but for the sake of not killing people in the training mission, that's what they've invented in DCS Web. So we're going to be going up against those at waypoint 4, so uh, not too long at all. And that is with the uh, s 530s and then you know we'll see what happens it's a DCS mission I think we can probably guess that something is going to arise with the pesky Russians so we shall see what happens and turn on to waypoint 3 now looks like he's finally decided to uh, make some altitude here ok that should probably do There we go. Okie Koki. Six nautical miles from waypoint three. I imagine he'll tell us fairly imminently about uh, turning our master arm on. Not that I've flown this mission like 30 times trying to record this video. Let's try and get a 
myself level around a little bit more. And two nautical miles from waypoint three to start our turn on to waypoint four in just a moment. Two, this is one. There we go. Let's turn toward waypoint four. Keep the ground speed at three eight zero knots. It is time to be in your air to air weapon in the primary three. We took off with Fox One Adapt with two Super 530D missiles, two magic missiles, and a center line front tank. And what do we put fire? I will go once again through the bedex. I forgot we still had a lot. Let's uh, take off his lock, give his ears a break. The Magic 2 is a short range IR missile with a maximum range of 8 nautical miles. Very similar to the side window. As mode of employment is almost the same, we will be covering it and focus on the Super 530 instead. Okay, so we're expecting there to be... Oh my god, he's still going. Okay, so we're about 20 nautical miles out from the uh, waypoint. I'm imagining the drones are probably 20 nautical miles further from there. Maybe a touch less. I have noticed when flying this mission with 30 or so times I have flown it to try and get this video recorded that they... Drones tend to show up very, very late on radar, so they don't show up to like 12 miles, which is a little bit odd. One would imagine they would show up a little bit sooner than that. But, um, basically it's fine. If we just keep on flying this direction, they will eventually show up on our radar, and we should be absolutely grand. Another thing uh, I should say very early on in this mission, for anyone who's using this as a tutorial, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend occasionally, is make sure you are very sparing with your fuel it's very easy to run out of fuel towards the end of this mission also i recommend you mapping labels or flying this mission with labels on obviously i don't normally fly with labels on i'm not a huge fan of flying with labels on but if you're like me and have a really crappy monitor it's really useful again for the second half of this mission for reasons that i will explain when we get there but yeah, let's see how we're doing. We're about 13 nautical miles out from waypoint 4. We're not seeing anything on the radar yet. Uh, there's this chappy who I believe is our fuel tanker. Um, let's see, well, can we lock him up at this range? No, we can't lock him. Obviously we can't lock him up at that range. Let's have a look at our F10 map. Why not? So... So that is, in fact, uh, oh, that's magic. That is our AWAX. We're going to be chatting uh, at great length with him fairly soon. So quite important we don't shoot our friendly AWAC chappy down. Used to see a lot of those. Used to live uh, in Lincolnshire near RF Waddington, which is obviously where a lot of the AWACs fly from. So used to see a ton of them around. Quite low, actually, where we used to see them. Noisy buggers. Anyway, we are... Oh, there we go. There is Chappie number one and Chappie number two. So let's... Uh, I'm just going to shut our radar down even further here. This is, in theory, going to give us a little more power for the old locking up. Let's just get one locked up there. And 
Let's see if we can get STT lock. STT lock? No. STT lock. No. STT lock? No. Yes, there we go. Okay. So we are going to fire just as we enter the uh, no escape zone. Okay, Fox One. Let's turn our autopilot on. So what we're going to do is as soon as we splash this bandit, if we do of course splash this bandit, we're going to switch to our close combat modes and try and peg the second one before he flies past us. Can be a touch fiddly, but I'm just going to trim down slightly here. Okay, so splash one. Let's uh, come on. It's a little bit awkward because uh, we're still locked onto this guy. Annoyingly, there we go. There is number two. Uh, got a little bit of frame rate lag all of a sudden. That's not helping us very much at all. Okay, Fox 1. That got a little bit scary there. It did freeze for a moment, but... 